today's lesson, we will look at how Job's hope in the Lord was rewarded. When was the last time you hoped in God's goodness and personally saw his redemption in your life? Job's friends mourned with him for seven days after he suffered great loss. They then encouraged Job to confess his sin of pride, as they believed it was his reason for his suffering. Eliphaz appealed to personal experience, Bildad pointed to universal wisdom, and Zophar declared what he felt was common sense. Eli, who rebuked the first three friends for being unable to give Job a reasonable answer for why he was suffering. However, Eli, who was only able to give a partial answer to Job's question by saying the people cannot understand all that God allows, but must trust him. Finally, the Lord spoke, and instead of answering Job's question directly, God asked Job a series of questions that no human could possibly answer, which brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Job chapter 42, verse 10. So what did Job say after hearing what God had to say about himself? First of all, he discovered that God is much more than some superior human being. We miss by a long shot when we try to make God in our own image or imagine him as the being who will meet our specific needs. When we pray, we have to think we know just what God should do to answer our prayers, when in reality, God has the whole picture, and we do not. When Job brought all of his questions to God, he only asked from the point of view of a man who had a rather superficial knowledge of God, things that he had heard from others. But now that God himself talked with Job, Job's view of God has greatly expanded. Now Job knows God's voice, sees God with his very eyes, and takes him to heart. This is now a personal relationship with the God of the universe. His view of God is far bigger and yet more intimate. The last words we hear from Job show his desire to repent in dust and ashes. The Hebrew word for repent is nacham, in which we see him sighing, breathing strongly with a sense of sorrow and regretting his ignorant and hasty words before God. Job defends, or God defends Job by speaking to his friends. Evidently, Eliphaz was the oldest of the three men, and so he is chosen by God as the representative. The three friends have the very narrow view of God mentioned earlier, that God is the great moral police officer, a God of immediate retribution, quickly meeting out punishment when people sin and bestowing material riches on the righteous. Sometimes this is true, but often it is not. Some greedy people use all their wiles to pile up stuff for themselves, and other very good people generously give away much of their goods to help others. When we accuse people of wrongdoing just because they are suffering, we are imputing to God a very limited character. When we look at people who seem successful even though they are immoral, we may be forgetting God's grace and mercy to sinners as he waits for them to repent. Often people die without ever turning to God, and then they are punished because they have ignored the great grace of God. The book of Job should open our eyes to see more of the sovereign greatness of God. He alone does what he wants because he alone sees the whole picture. The first chapter of Job lets us, as readers, in on a conversation between God and the devil so that we can see why God allowed Job to suffer. But so far, we... As we can see, God never shared this information with Job. Job had to trust God that he was working in the best interest of all those who love him. And hopefully this study has opened us to catch a greater vision of the greatness of our God. So here's our lesson. Job was certainly not perfect, but he passionately desired to communicate honestly with God. His friends, on the other hand, just mouthed platitudes that they had heard. But even worse, they arrogantly thought, they knew why Job was suffering, even though they had no real evidence for sin on his part. Evaluate the circumstances in your life. Let's do that with our lives, and let's pray that the Lord would open our spiritual eyes to see what he is doing. But don't stop there. Let's pray that the Lord would show up and show us how to respond to our family and friends who are going through circumstances that are beyond their control. And let's offer wisdom, prayer, and even sight.